My name is Jeff McIntyre. I'm the president of West Virginia American Water. And on my right is Laura Jordan. She's our manager of external affairs. I also want to recognize Mayor Danny Jones from the city of Charleston, who's present with us today, and Kanawha County Commission President Kenny Carper, who is with us here today. We've obviously had an incident on the Elk River that uh, had an impact on our water treatment processes here at this treatment plant. It's a, it's a tank farm. It was a release of material from a tank farm. We know it uh, casually as a foaming agent. Um, you would have to ask the equipment or the chemical manufacturer of that the detailed particulars of the information, but we've looked at it and it doesn't have what we would consider a high lethality. We, had an, we, we were notified of an event from the DEP just before noon yesterday. The event, we believe, had started before that time, but we were not aware. We were informed initially that there was a flocculant that was released into the river. A flocculant is a product that we typically use in water treatment, so it didn't cause us any real concern. When we heard that it was this product, we examined the nature of the product, and we have an advanced treatment system here at the Charleston Water Treatment Plant. It's activated carbon. We also have the ability, when there's river discharges, to add powder activated carbon. These, these components have the ability to adsorb chemicals. It is essentially the premier treatment process for this type of event. We started to see the material come into the plant and our treatment processes were effectively treating this material up until about four o'clock yesterday. At that time, the odor became apparent in the finished water. This material has a very strong black licorice odor or anisette odor, whichever you prefer to know it by. The response at that time was to contact the West Virginia Bureau of Public Health and engage them in dialogue about actions that would be appropriate for this material. Obviously, we still have no quantified amount. We have run some tests and we can detect the material. There is a material present, but we don't know how to quantify it. So we didn't know yesterday how to quantify it. DuPont Chemical Incorporated overnight, their chemist worked to help us try to identify a standard method for analysis to be able to quantify. That method is now being rolled out to an Army uh, uh, National Guard unit that has uh, a mobile lab that has you know, a lot of high-priced equipment that can analyze this, and they're going to start analyzing samples that we've been collecting. And we've done some of our own analysis, but it clear using, using the wrong standard did not provide us the accuracy we need to know exactly the quantities that we're dealing with. We're still trying to work with, uh, through the MSDS sheet, the company that manages the product or manufactures the product, with their toxicologist, with physicians, industrial hygienists, to try to understand the risk assessment component of this product. So in other words, what kind of quantities can be present in drinking water and not pose harm to our customers? We don't know that the water's not safe, but I can't say it is safe. Therefore, yesterday, after discussions with the West Virginia Public Board of Public Health, other agencies and the governor's office, the governor decided to declare a state of emergency and along with the health department, we issued uh, a notice of do not use. I, I want to clarify for all our customers, there's a number of counties that are affected and parts of counties that are affected. If you are one of those customers, do not use this water. The only appropriate use is toilet flushing. So flushing your commode would be appropriate, but don't make baby formula with it, don't brush your teeth with it, don't wash with it, don't shower with it, don't drink it. You can't just boil it. So it's not a boil water advisory, it's a do not use advisory. It's important for our customers to know that. Last night we started a process which we call NXT, which is an auto dialer. It takes quite a few hours to, to get out to 100,000 customers that we conservatively think have probably been affected by this incident. And those auto dialers left messages at people's homes about this. So our whole thrust has been trying to remedy the situation at the plant so that this plant can produce the quality of water uh, that our customers need and also to communicate with our customers behaviors that they should take to make sure that they're protected in the interim period. So we now have a standard. We will be running tests. Once we get analysis, we'll be able to look at risk-based assessments and make determinations of next steps. 
we have no timeline. Unfortunately, this is in the, in the distribution system. Once it's in there, there's no more treatment for it. So our activities will be to go away from the treatment plant in concentric rings, if you like, flush the system, and sample the system to make sure it's safe for our customers. We may be able to put customers back in service by zones. I don't think we're going to be able to do it the entire area all at once. So it's going to be chasing the line as the water flows and testing and flushing as we go. So that's, that's the information we have at hand. I know there's going to be lots of questions. We're willing to take and answer as many as we can. We'll take them all. We'll answer what we can. And I will share with you that we, we have, as American Water, a, a number of states that we provide service in. And our Pennsylvania American Water Company has provided us 12 mobile water haulers. So tanks, 7,000-gallon tanks, 5,000-gallon tanks. A number of those have been deployed, and I'll give you the locations of those so the customers can know where to go get water. We've also purchased four tractor trailer loads worth of bottled water to, to get started to make water available. We know that the governor's working with EMS, FEMA, Homeland Security to try to provide more water access for customers and citizens of West Virginia that will be affected. The current locations that I know where customers can go get water is Crossings Mall in Elkview. Riverside High School, South Charleston Recreation Center. I believe that's where the tank, uh, the uh, tractor trailers are with the bottled water. West Virginia State University, the Glasgow Fire Department, East Bank Fire Department, and Aldershot United Methodist Church. We also have several other tankers, or at least one that I know of for sure that's deployed at a hospital. So we, we obviously need to manage that infrastructure they have large water needs. So I'll start taking questions at this point if I can. And I'll just pick you out of the crowd one at a time. Start with you, John. Uh, yes. Um, uh, are you saying that initially, are you saying that initially uh, the, the substance was misidentified to you all and that that was part of the delay yesterday in taking some action? that you later found out it was a different material than you initially thought? It didn't, it didn't delay our action, but it was a different material that was initially identified than what was eventually identified as the... Where did that tank. incorrect information come from, and, and at what time did you get the correct information? I, I don't know where we got the incorrect information. I believe we got the correct information about quarter to two. And, and if I could just follow up, yes. uh, this particular facility that had this spill filed with the State Emergency Response Commission documentation indicating that they stored a significant amount of this particular substance on site. Were you not were you all not aware of that facility and of this the storing of this material? And if and had you not taken any precautions thinking of the possibility of a leak of this sort? I, I can't answer that question. I don't have that information. Thank you. Mr. McIntyre, how uh, uncharted territory obviously this is uncharted territory. I'm sure you guys have Tried to research to see if anybody else has dealt with anything like this, the size of your system. How much of an uncharted territory are you in here? This is not a chemical that's typical to be in water water treatment process. It, it's a uh, when we look for a standard method. Last night I talked to the EPA labs in Denver. They weren't able to have a standard process. Uh, the chemical manufacturer or the MSD rep uh, didn't have a standard for this as a diluted product. They tested it at full strength. So they didn't have anything that we could correlate that down to do a to do a health risk. We know the West Virginia Bureau of Public Health is is talking to the CDC, um, but I don't know what information they have at this point. But it's not intended to be in water. Jeff, has the company ever had anything this <coughs> large scale for just a shutdown system wide? I mean, no. No, I mean, we've had a number of disasters like the derecho last year that taxed us, the ice storm uh, last week taxed us, but we haven't had a situation like this where we've had to do a, a do not use of this magnitude. Is there a follow-up before? No. Can you repeat the questions? Can I repeat the questions? Because yeah, they can't hear. I'll, I'll try to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, what's been your contact with Freedom Industries and did they initially report when they had a leak, or what's going on with them? We, so the question was, what contact has the water company had with Freedom Inc.? We had none. They did not report this to us, and I have no idea of when or if they reported it to anyone else. Hello? 
I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll take the question from the lady here. First. Um, you were, you said you were notified by the ETA. Did yes, any yes. customers call and notify you as well about smelling Long this? Um, in fact, maybe two to three days I'm ago. I have no knowledge of customers notifying. So the question was, were we ever notified by customers days ago? The answer is that this wasn't in our water, and we had no detection of it in our water until 4 o'clock. So we, we got notified actually by the DEP, not the EPA. So it was the local DEP that notified us, and, and we had customer calls after this started to show up in the water. We've heard reports of bleach. Uh, what is the status of this leak? Is there still some sort of chemical seeping from the, the ground into the water at this point? It's a good question because it's a big part of how we have to, you know, minimize or mitigate bleach. I'm sorry. Please repeat the question. Thank you. So the question was, what, what's being done to prevent this from continuing to hit the Elk River in simple uh, terms? What's the status of the leak and could you explain the concept of uh, leaching, I believe, is the term. What's the status of the leak yes. and what is leaching? Yes. So leaching, I'll start with there. Leaching is anything where water or materials, you know, move through soil. You know, it's called, you know, it leaches through soil. That's a simple description. This product, we understand, was in a bulk tank. That tank leaked, it had containment. The containment failed. I don't know how. This is what I've been told and that it migrated over land into the Elk River, and that it may have absorbed into the soil and also leached into the river through the soil. And is it still leaching? I talked to the governor's office, and the governor's office indicated that the DEP gave specific instructions last night to how to, how to you know, burn and control and pump this material. So I do not know the status, but I do not believe it's continuing to flow. Yes, sir. Um, you say that you all have not had any discussions with the company that had the spill since the incident occurred. Uh, they're just a river from you all. Do you not have any sort of ongoing relationship with them to understand what things they have, given their, their close proximity to the public water intakes? The question is, do we have a relationship due to the proximity of, of this industry to our intake? I, I know that American Water, West Virginia American Water, has done source water protection assessments. I do not know if this specific uh, company has responded to any request for information or provided any information to us. If, if I could just follow up, you, you said that this particular material, I believe, does not have a particularly high lethality. Could you explain exactly what information you base that statement on and also explain what you know and how you know it about its possibility of making people sick but not killing them? I'm really not qualified. All I can tell you is I had a discussion with us. Pardon? I can repeat the question. So <laughs> how do we how do we know that it's not that it's not a lethal compound or that it's not going to cause harm? Is that the simplified question? We we talked to a toxicologist yesterday that, that is listed on the MSDS sheet. We had discussions with them about the lethal dosage for, for rats. And he gave us information that the amount of material that someone would have to eat out of that stock tank was considerable uh, to cause harm. But we have no idea of the dilution, so we're not prepared to speculate on this diluted product. The only information that we have is on the MSDS sheet, which is stock product at full concentration. Obviously, this has been diluted in the Elk River significantly and gone through a water treatment plant process. So I can't correlate. If I could just clarify, you're referring to the, the LD50 that's listed on the MSDS sheet and, and this toxicologist back calculated for you some estimate of how much somebody, person would have to ingest? He indicated. Was, it, was his analysis based on a, an adult male or a child or a baby? And they based their, as I understand, he, he based his whole discussion on an average weight, which I don't recall. Thank you. When you... Uh, when did you actually become aware of this? Like, you're saying it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon, or am I misunderstanding you? When did we become aware of this event? We became aware of this event just before noon. The 4 o'clock time that I mentioned is when it, it exceeded the treatment capacity of our facility, and we noticed it in the finished water. You never got any complaints from people because we could actually taste it at our workplace, which isn't very far from the treatment plant. 
uh, probably around 3, 3.30 in the after, afternoon. Uh, it, people were saying that the water from the water fountain tasted like licorice. And uh, it, was, it, it had a noticeable uh, t taste to it, almost a cough syrup type taste. I, you know, the question is when, when or did we start getting customer complaints about the taste in the water? I don't know, sir. I'm going to go over here for me. If you first learned about the program around noon and then the odor came up at four, but you said you were learning about the chemical during that time and still learning about amounts that could be in the water, the water could be safe. What made you determine that because you could smell it, it was suddenly not safe? I mean, does that, because it sounds like you don't know that much about the chemical. What was that the only determination and the only the only factor, the smell that made you decide, oh, mm -hmm. it's four o'clock, we should say that this is unsafe to use? So if I can repeat the question, you know, in, in parse, the question is, was it the odor that drove us to think that it was unsafe at four o'clock? Right. So we, we knew about the product, but we have a lot of confidence in this treatment plant and the processes are designed for these types of events. At four o'clock when we noticed the odor we knew that a contaminant that's not typical for water treatment had received, reached into our finished water. And at that point, in an abundance of caution, I can't tell you that the water, as I said earlier, is unsafe. But I also can't tell you it's safe. So from that caution, we decided it best. And you know, we still have to provide fire service to communi communities, and sanitation is still important. So you still don't know, you know how much can be in the water to be safe or other other specifics about the chemical, but it was the odor, that the four hours, the, the, the four hour time frame that you know you learned about the problem to when you alerted. It, you know, obviously this chemical was, was leaking out. It was the odor that made you decide, okay, it's not safe. So you ask again, is it the odor that made us determine it's not safe? We still don't know that it's not safe, but it's the odor that indicated the presence in the finished water of a contaminant that's unknown. You know, in, in its Were you notified by the company, or did you learn from emergency officials? How did you actually learn that the, that the, that the substance had gotten into the river and was headed for your intakes or already there? So how did we find out when it was in the river? Yeah. Our first point of contact was from the West Virginia DEP. So you did, they, the company provided you no notification that this material was, was going into the water then? The question is the company provided us no notice. That's correct. We've had no communication with the company. I'm going to go over to the gentleman with the sweater here. Okay. Mike, is the process at a water treatment facility not enough to render the water safe? Uh, you know, I mean, it, it was, it, is the process at the facility not enough to just get this out of the system? I mean, can you explain that a little bit? How did this get through the system if you have water treatment facility? Well, the question is, how come the water treatment plant just didn't treat this as you would expect it to treat everything? They're not typically designed to treat. Water plants are not typically designed to treat everything. They're typically designed to treat everything that's naturally occurring in the water stream, and they're designed for the specific water streams, that the raw water that they're treating. But we have powdered activated carbon system here that sits and it's on standby all the time for a river discharge like this. It is, it's the premium treatment process to have activated carbon in a, in a water treatment process. And we have confidence in it. So had the substance already gone through the system by the time, you know, was it already through before you had a chance to use that activated carbon system? So, so the question is, did, this, did the material go through our system before we turned it on? The answer is no, we had it on. It's just overwhelmed. Activated carbon absorbs chemicals to the surface of that material, and it just got saturated with absorbed mm -hmm. material is what we believe, and therefore the treatment process couldn't handle the, the quantity. And so what will have to happen before the water is being safe? Well, we've, in, we've increased certain chemicals that will help oxidize this uh, process. We, we continue to add the powder activated carbon. We need to get the water from this plant up to a, a safe standard so that we can move water out into the distribution system and then flush the distribution system uh, to make sure the customers have clean water. And are there certain things you have to find out before that can happen? You know, do you have to find out how much is out there? Do you have to find out how far it's gone? And I mean, what questions have to be answered before you can do that? So the question is, are there certain things that we have to understand? And the answer is yes. We need to know what the quantities are and what the health risks are for those quantities. Mayor Jones has a question for you. Mayor Jones, yes, sir. Thank you. I, on behalf of the people that are 
in their homes, in the hospitals, and in the hotels that we're getting calls from. Do you have any idea today, tomorrow, next week, next month, how long this is going to last? Mayor Jones, thank you for that question. I know it's a big question on everyone's mind. How long is it going to take? Do we have any idea? We cannot provide a timeline at this point. Once we start getting analytical qualitative data or quantitative data that we can then talk with and do a health assessment, we will have a better idea of what we're dealing with and how far we can push it. There is a potential that this could be an aesthetic issue of taste and odor of that licorice if it's below the, the threshold limits for, for health impact. So I, I wish I could say a time, but I can't. I just don't know at this point. I'm going to go to the gentleman. In the how are you going to get, how are you going to know when the water stops leaching if you've had no contact with the actual plant up there, or when it's the chemicals stop leaching so that you can intake water that's not contaminated? Well, the, the river will flow the water that it flows to our plant. We're testing the intake <clears throat> water of the plant so we'll know what contaminants are there as soon as we get through the qualitative testing. But we don't know. It's up to, it's a private property. We have no right to their property. The DEP is the agency and other agencies in West Virginia that will have to work. They're pumping it with, out of the tank with that company up there. I understand they're, they're, they're removing material from the tank into tankers, and they're still working on the site. I'll go back here. Uh, Poison Control says it's received upwards of 500 calls since you ordered the do not drink water. Do you, they all <clears throat> reported similar symptoms, vomiting, headaches, irritation, and they shared a similar common theme of, you know, we've drank or been exposed to water in the past 24 hours. Is this a coincidence? Do you think that this is somehow related to any dangers associated with this chemical? Well, you're asking me, do I have any um, information that say that this, the health issues that people are reporting that you mentioned, vomiting, irritation, that, is it a coincidence that it's related to this event? I'm not able to link anybody's illness to this event. You know, it has a smell to it, and when people have a smell in their water, it can cause stress, it can cause other things. I can't link the two. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not qualified to try to link those two for you. I'm going to go back here. So, <clears throat> if we can go back to something you said earlier, that the odor is what indicated that the treatment plant was not processing this chemical, that there was a chemical in the plant that shouldn't have been there, if that's what I'm understanding. So is there no standard testing, whether it's on a daily and hourly basis, that the water coming out of this treatment plant does not have a chemical in it that you all aren't able to treat? So the question is, what well, first part was, we detected it when we smelled it. And the second part is, do we not have something that can test that would indicate a chemical in our finished water? The first answer is, we knew it made it through the treatment plant when we, when we smelled it. The second question is, there's no test that can indicate all chemicals that you can do on finished water. We are regulated uh, in our water treatment. We exceed all the regulatory standards for water treatment, but there is no, this is a, this is a product that we've had a hard time finding a testing standard for so that we can quantify it today. So there's just no, not even constant monitoring to say, this is the water that's going out, hey, maybe something will be up. Whether or not you're testing for a specific chemical or not, there's no water test, no water monitoring of the water that's coming out of your plant that lets you know something is up. So you're asking, is there no water? No, there is testing. We test our water regularly. We test it. We're in compliance more than most other utilities on our, on our water sampling compliance. We test our water extensively and regularly, and it is safe. But remember, we're reacting to an event. We're, it's a spill that happened from an industrial facility up the river <coughs> that we're reacting to. It's not normal. It's not supposed to be in the water. But had there been no odor, would we have? Would you all have been able to know that there was a chemical? There was an odor in the. Uh, so you asked if if there was if no there odor. There was no odor. We knew. Well, we knew that this material was in the river before we had the odor come in the plant. You know, we had been contacted by DEP, so we knew it was there, and our treatment plant processes are very robust. It just got overwhelmed by this problem. I'll go back here. If I could just maybe ask and clarify that. Um, uh, you are regulated in the Safe Drinking Water Act. And it, 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 is what you're saying is that, that 
that uh, Congress and the EPA haven't set a maximum contaminant limit for this particular substance. So because of that, it's not something that you would routinely test for because it's a rather exotic substance that you wouldn't see in most drinking water systems being exposed to. Is that essentially correct? So you're asking, is it, is it not regulated that we test for this or other types of compounds? No, it, it, it's not. It's not expected to be in this. This is a, a product that doesn't even have to be placarded to go down the road. It's not designated as transportation of hazardous good, to my understanding of reviewing the MSDS sheet. But no, we, we are not. But we have a set of standard tests that we apply, and we go beyond the regulation requirements to make sure our water is safe for our customers. But you can't cover everything. Since this product Could you is... also clarify the activated carbon is a, is a backup system that, that you have on site for when a chemical incident occurs. It is not part of your routine treatment for other things that we would want to keep out of our water. So the question was, is activated carbon a part of our normal process or is it just a backup? It's both. We have activated carbon filter caps on our filters that every drop of water that we put through this plant gets that treatment all the time. We have powder activated carbon that we can put into a, a process upstream of the filters that provides that additional treatment capacity in these types of events. And just so, finally to follow up on that, given that it's not a regulated substance that you all would be typically required to test for, shouldn't you have had some idea, given that it's stored in a significant quantity just up the river, and shouldn't you have known that there was a possibility something like this would happen and have planned for it? I guess you're asking, should we have known? We didn't. Um, why, why has there been no contact with Freedom Industries? Wouldn't it have made sense to say, hey, a lot of your chemicals in our river, in our water, what do you guys know about it? I wouldn't say that we haven't had any contact, but I can't tell you. I believe that we had contact when we did our risk assessment. I don't know what information we got back from this firm, but I don't believe we got it. That's, that's the fact so as I know them right now. Do we know how much gallons, how many gallons of this liquid were? Do we know how much of this was released? No, I don't. Ballpark? I, I can't ballpark it because I don't know. I'll go back here. Is there a concern for this chemical reacting with other chemicals that you use to treat the water already in the process of it mixing and causing some kind of... Our water quality professionals, and we have a, a PhD researcher. So you, let me repeat the question again. You asked, will this conflict with any other chemicals or react with any other chemicals in the water treatment process. We don't believe so. We have water quality professionals throughout American Water and we have research professionals at the PhD level that have provided us advice that we don't expect that reaction. Back to me. Mr. Patrick Harris, a two part question here. First of all, do you feel, uh, you're doing these things that you, that you explain. Do you feel helpless here because you're in the unknown? How helpless do you feel? <clears throat> I'll take the first part question. The question was how helpless do we feel because we don't know? We don't really feel helpless, we just feel impacted. I mean, this is something that happened to us that's not in the daily course of business. We're dealing with it, we're water professionals, we're gonna protect our customers. We know how to treat water, and, and, and that's what we're here to do. So. Let me ask you another second thing. part. Yeah. Say I live in Rome County, I say, hey, I live a long way from Charleston. I mean, it's got to go through, you know, it was spilled on the Elk River, and you know, I mean, what if, what if I live there and I say, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to take this seriously because I live so far from Charleston. I mean, you, we we know what the advisory is, but you know, there might be that attitude out there. So, to, to rephrase the question, you know, someone that lives far away from the system, why would they be worried about this, and would they just say, it's not going to affect me because I'm I'm not on the Elk River, for example. Our water treatment plant takes its source from the Elk River, but our distribution goes far and wide. I think we have estimated 1,500 miles, approximately, attached to the system of pipeline. We go 60 miles in one direction to Logan County on this pipeline. So whether you're geographically centered around this treatment plant or not doesn't matter. It's where the water flows. And we've identified those areas and those customers that are served by this treatment plant and in, therefore impact. He, yes? How far do you think this contaminate, contaminated water has reached already? Where do you think it is at this point? 
how far do we think this contaminant has moved through the system? I don't, I don't have an answer for that. We're, we're seeing sporadic. I, I know that we have a number of employees that live at different locations, and some are reporting that they don't have this at their, at their house. And I didn't have this at, at my house, but it doesn't mean it's not on its, on its way there. So we, we don't know how far it's moved, but our goal, again, is to get the treatment plant working properly, putting out a high quality of water so that we can then deal with what's gone out to the distribution system. If, in fact, you uh, reach that point, how long will it take you to flush this 1,500-mile system? If we, in fact, reach that point, <clears throat> flushing will be predicated on the health risk assessment and, and what we have to do versus risk assessment versus the aesthetic issue of the water. So I don't know how long it'll take us to flush because it'll depend what we see when we go out and start flushing. We have an extensive system. Water moves in different ways. We'll have to wait and see. Well, how long would it take water to go through the system? Let's say you elect it to flush. I mean, are we talking days, hours? Well, water can take hours to days. Yes, sir. Could you just give us a, a, a little walk through the mechanics of this flushing the system and exactly how that works? And also, will you all at some point, when that is completed and you start bringing customers back online, will you be providing some advice for people about what to do, given that they probably have some water in the pipes in their house or the hot water tank in their house, and, and what they should do about those sorts of things? So that's a, that's a good question. A little bit more explanation on how we would do the flushing, and then what advice we'd offer our customers about what they may need to do in their house when we would eventually lift this order. So the flushing is essentially unidirectional flushing. It, it centers out from the plant and follows that flow of clean water. So as we know, clean water is moving through the system. We, we work ahead to flush. We, we go and we open fire hydrants. We dechlorinate the water to protect the environment because we use chlorine as a pathogen protection uh, for our water system. So we'll work outwards in a, in a spider web fashion, if you will, following the network as it goes, opening hydrants, and, and flushing, smelling, and taking samples, and getting confirmation of the quality. We may be able to lift uh, this by zones, as I said, which would include streets as we, as we moved. And, and we'll look to educate our customers on what they will have to do when this advisory is listed. I mean, they will have water in hot water tanks, they will have you know, water in their piping and that. that we'll, we'll help provide instructions to our customers. And, and could you also just go back and clarify, you mentioned at the very started your comments that, that you all were able uh, early on to, de to detect this substance in the water, but, but if, uh, could you explain what you meant by the fact that you could detect it, but you weren't able to quantify it? Okay, let me, let me get the timeline right, because you asked the question that we were able to detect it, but we weren't able to quantify it. Let me give you the timeline on that. Around five o'clock, we were collecting samples, and it was later in the evening that we ran those samples through a GC mass spec lab lab equipment that we have in Huntington that's tied to the Orsanko monitoring project. So it's a, it's a very um, robust piece of equipment, it's very complicated to use, and we were able to get the pattern that would show the spike of a contaminant, but we weren't able to quantify that because we didn't have the standards. There are standards that you have to run with these machines that you compare to the sample that you're analyzing. We didn't have that, so we weren't able to come up with the the accurate numbers. So we could see it because it pro provides a spike on the chart, but we couldn't quantify it. Does that answer your question? Yes, and, it, it, and it just to follow up, even, even if you've been able to quantify it at that point and say there was this many parts per something or milligrams per whatever, you would not at that point have had, if I understood what you also said, you would not have had a regulatory standard or a health standard at that point to compare that to, correct? And, and you all are also in the process of trying to, to get some experts to give you that sort of a number? So the question was, even if we'd known the quantity, we wouldn't have known the risk assessment evaluation, and that's correct. Aren't there some some uh, some uh, some numbers that are also shown on some of the MSDS, uh, you know, OSHA permissible, permissible emission limits and those sorts of things, but those are related to air? There wasn't, they didn't see, you couldn't, haven't been able to find a water? <coughs> well, even in talking to the toxicologist that we called from the MSDS, she, they're not able to correlate. They test this product at full strength. They don't do analysis at diluted strengths, and they're not able to correlate from a full strength analysis to a diluted analysis. What's, is West Virginia Water doing anything to help provide water, other sources of water to <coughs> communities that have been affected? 
Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I provided a list of places where people can go get water. We had 12 tanker trucks, you know, transported down from Pennsylvania American Water, and we bought four transport trucks at this time uh, worth of bottled water that's been, you know, it's being distributed as we speak out to the communities. I'd suggest if there's additional questions, we can make sure they get answered um, afterwards. I do want to present an opportunity. Mayor Danny Jones would like to say a few words, followed by Commissioner Harper. Great. Very few words. Uh, I want to, this has been devastating to uh, the public at large and to the people that uh, live in our city. It also is devastating to obviously just everyday commerce that uh, we deal with in uh, every, every business of every size. And it, uh, can you imagine checking in a hotel in Charleston, West Virginia and being told, sorry, you can't use the water. That would include the hotels, the hospitals, and our CBB is getting uh, lots of calls and wondering what what we're supposed to do and what's going to happen next. I had hoped to come over here this morning and find a uh, some kind of a timeline and when it might uh, be uh, we might find some resolution, but we didn't do it. I personally appreciate all the sophisticated questions that came from folks because it helped me understand what was going on. But it, uh, the folks out there that that uh, just work every day and go to work and um, and and just regular citizens they they would like an end to this we hope that that uh, that resolution can be reached sometime soon yes sir mayor have you had any contact with freedom industries no we know who has okay. we have what grant myself and cw uh, were on the scene at freedom industries yes. So you talk to them, and, and, and uh, my emergency service director has. Same time, D. And he, you gave me some information this morning about parts of water and. Same time, D. Yeah. So, uh, so what what Grant got from the emergency service director, or from my emergency service director got from them and the county, uh, would uh, has been repeated up here today. Ken. My name is Kent Carper. I'm the president of the local government the county commission. I'm not going to waste your time by the obligatory. Everyone's working together, cooperating. That's what we get paid to do. Uh, the question that Mayor Jones asked is a question we're being asked by everyone else. How long will this take? And the answer is they do not know. The amount of contamination and the effect on human consumption, they do not know. The decision that the Western New America Water Company made they do not use uh, warning, order, edict, whatever you want to call it, it, is unprecedented in this community, unprecedented in the state. It was the right decision to make based upon what we've been told. Uh, the blame assignment, uh, who did what wrong, uh, should there have been uh, a quicker action taken, that will uh, take place in the orderly course of business. Uh, my understanding is that the county officials, along with the city officials, that actually found the location after the triggering odor complaints. Uh, they found the location because they had the experience, they knew about the plant, they had uh, our uh, fire coordinator, Chief Sigmund, who's right here, has had 30-some years experience, along with uh, Chief Gano, uh, Mayor Jones's uh, emergency coordinator. They had an idea about the origin based upon where they knew the plant was. So they went to the plant, they found the source after the odor complaints came in. The odor complaints are still coming in. Uh, once the odor complaints came in to the 911 and the DEP, <coughs> then we began to act on that. What we're doing now is the only thing that local government can do. We're trying to give truthful answers to serious questions. The health issues are left to the physicians. The amount of contamination or what it means for medical consequences are not something we can do. Uh, the uh, rolling, uh, rollout of uh, water points, distribution points, two different ways. One, the water buffaloes, which are tanker trucks, and the other ones are bottled water, are being done where we think uh, will do the most good. Last night, about 10 o'clock, we began the process of distributing water to where we knew it was needed most. Nursing homes, hospitals, those that were ill that couldn't take care of themselves. The thing we're asking the public to do now is remember that we're aware of this now, 
you have an opportunity to take care of yourself and your family, and in the event that you believe you need any form of help, call 911. Uh, our emergency service director was on the scene, talked to Freedom Industries, knows exactly what they told him. If you've got any questions for me, I'll answer it, or I'll let you talk to Chief Sigmund. Mr. Ward. Uh, Commissioner? Yes, uh, sir. The uh, county emergency officials received the same reports about chemical storage inventories that the State Emergency Response Commission does. Can you tell us what, if any, uh, planning the Kanawha County emergency officials have done uh, for dealing with this particular substance, given that it was known that it was right up the river from the water intakes? Not enough. But what? Ha but have they done any? I'm not aware of the county planning department or the county emergency services giving advice to the West Virginia American Water Company. West Virginia American Water Company certainly was aware that these plants are right above their intake. I, I think anybody that lives here knew that. That plant has been there probably since the 30s or 40s. I believe it's the old Penn's Oil Refinery. I believe, am I correct on that? Yes, sir. Yes. Anything else? Yes. Uh, the state DEP, I talked to a spokesman yesterday and said that somebody did call the state spill line at 11 yesterday morning, but they weren't aware if it was Kanawha <coughs> County Emergency Services or if it was Freedom Industries themselves. Do you, did There's you plenty of, call? Their, their question is, uh, who called who first, who called the spill line? At this point, uh, we'll get to that later. Right now, we've got a situation where 300,000 people are expecting someone to show up with water uh, that's our job right now, and our other job is to make sure that those that feel that they've been contaminated or ill are taken care of. Our 911 center received well over a thousand calls in less than four or five hours over this. I believe we got uh, about 25 EMS calls. We transported about five people. The situation is simply this. Follow not the advice, but the directive of the water company. Do not use the water until further notice. I concur with Mayor Jones. We would like to know exactly how long this is going on. There's all this speculation. It is speculation. The toxicologist, the Western American Water Company, simply will tell the public and us when they believe the water can be used. I'm not a toxicologist. I'm not a chemist. But I have seen some of the reports. I've got some of the information. They don't know. I think that's the simple answer. They do not know. When they know, we expect them to tell us. Yes, sir? With, with no timeline at all, and obviously people still learning about this and maybe not having access to water, is there any concern that maybe people should should look for accommodations out of the county overnight or anything like that? The question is, not knowing how long, should people uh, leave seven the county counties. or go somewhere? The answer is no. Uh, the, the answer is, at first, it's in nine counties. And second of all, people are, are free to do that if they choose to do that. Some folks will. Some folks will go to their relatives. You don't really need the government to tell people to use their common sense. People need to use their common sense. In short, follow the directive of the water company. Do not use the water until further notice other than a flush of toilet. That's, that's it. It's that simple. It's serious, but it's that simple. Any other questions? You want to talk to Chief Sigmund. He was on the scene. He's got over 30 some years experience. He was the fire chief of South Charleston, West Virginia, and has extensive experience in hazmat containing things like that. He was on the scene. He found, along with uh, some of our other folks, the origin of the leak, and he has talked to Freedom Enterprises. I would point out one thing. Remember this they spilled the chemical, not the water company. The question is did the water company act responsibly after the spill was? That's for another day and another time. Thank you very much. Chief? Yes, sir. Um, I know that in recent months, years, we've been holding the area chemical companies more accountable for notification. Notification lets you know right now, and when they don't, I know that you guys give a heck about it. So I just don't understand how this went on for so long without us being told. And we gave him that heck yesterday when we talked to him. Uh, that process has just started. We, we did talk to them. Remember, this was not a, a material that was normally be placarded. It's not normally carried as uh, hazardous materials on the highway. We found it because, just like your question, Mr. Ward, was we found it through our data. We have the Tier 2 reports. We use the Cameo system. 
we knew what the material was just by smelling it. Our emergency uh, services director knew what where the, the material was coming from. He told me where it was. We went over and found it. Uh, DEP did the same thing. They knew by the smell where it was coming from. And, from it. and it also seems a little shocking that if this was an odorless substance, we might still not know. That's very true. What was the scene when you got there before, as, as the authorities, were they already starting to, had they put booms in the river? Had they done anything to, to uh, contain it? It appeared they put some booms up around our containment dike. Uh, just looking at the plan upon arrival, it looked like business as normal. I did uh, run into DEP folks. They arrived about the same time. And uh, with them, we, we investigated what was going on. We knew what the material was, but we confirmed that. I went back to the office to pull up my reports. And we've had previous experience with the same chemical at a couple other facilities here in, in the county. So I went back and got our safety data sheets. Went back to the scene at that time, the water company was there. Now, not to about the same time and assessing the situation themselves. So there was no statutory requirement for them to report this, but wouldn't it have been common sense since the water plant is located below there for them to warn somebody that something was coming downstream? I don't know what the legal requirements were of that. It's not a reportable quantity material that listed in the requirements. I think being a, a potential pollutant for this water plant, that would have been the proper thing to do. And I'll be honest, it took us a few minutes after we got there to determine it actually was going in the river. It was not obvious at, at the time, nor did they tell us at the time it was going into the river. We had to discover it for ourselves along with environmental protection folks. What are the other facilities that, that store or use this particular material? There, there's a company called Diversified Products or Diversified Services, forgive me for not knowing a second name. It's down off of 817 in the west side of St. Albans. They're also uh, an environmental response contractor. But they also uh, deliver the stuff to the coal mines, prep plants. And there's a facility, and forgive me for not having it right on top of my head, between Chesapeake and Marmette, there's a little tank farm where you go over the waters of Wind Street. There's a little tank farm there. Uh, we've had an issue there, uh, the, the licorice smell. Uh, we had to meet with him. And, and you, several people have mentioned that this stuff didn't need to be placarded and it wasn't classified as a hazardous material. Could you just clarify, you're talking about a very specific regulatory definition by the Department of Transportation. That's the fact that they have to file a Tier 2 report means that it's classified as an extremely hazardous substance under EPCRA, correct? It, it's listed as a hazardous substance. I won't say the extremely part of it. It is a hazardous substance, and they have filed the Tier 2 reports. Now, here's one of the issues we had. The Tier 2 data we have usually is also the material safety data sheet, or now commonly called a safety data sheet. It's not attached to that file. You can find that separately. Normally, Did they have one on site that they could give you? Uh, we didn't have it immediately. Once we confirmed what the material was, I already had a data sheet in my hand. But the, the, isn't the company supposed to have one on They're site? They're supposed to have it on hand. And Did we didn't talk to them immediately. It took us a, few, a little bit of time to make some good contact with them. But uh, like I said, we had that data sheet. We just confirmed what we were dealing with. Uh, we have other things to do. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Jones. Yeah. Thank you, President thank you. Carper. Thank you. Thank you very this much. Time I, thank you. Thank you very much. This time I want to thank everyone for the questions. I'm going to end the press conference at this point. We have people that are here, Laura, Jordan, and myself that can answer individual questions. Thank you very much. Any plans to have another press conference? No plans at this time. Uh,